Let's continue our introduction to VEX and VOPS by looking at the distance function. So as always, this project file will be available on Patreon, so you can grab it there if you would like. Let's go ahead and drop down a grid, and we're gonna build a little bit of a setup here that's going to allow us to do some procedural animation. It's uh, just one example of how you can use this. So we're gonna drop down a grid, and then we're gonna drop down an add node. And in this add node, let's go ahead and press this plus icon, and we get one point here in the center of our scene. Let's move this up to one in the Y, just so we have that kind of off of where our grid is sitting. Let's drop down our attribute wrangle now, and we're gonna wire in our grid to the first input and our add node into the second input. Let's go ahead and view that, and we're gonna set this to run over primitives. And I'm gonna go ahead and pop this out so we can press Alt plus E. It's gonna pop this out. By default, this is gonna be zoomed down, uh, zoomed out like this. We can press Control plus the plus, icon to, or the plus key to zoom that in or increase the size, control and minus will lower the size, but let's leave it like it is for now. And the first thing that we're going to need to do is grab a vector. So the distance function is gonna take a couple of vectors. We'll look at that here in a moment, but we need to grab the position of our point that we have being wired into our second input. So if we actually look at our add node here, we don't have any primitives here. We only have our point position. So that's good to know because we are running over our primitives. But let's go ahead and create that attribute. We could set this to a variable if we would like, but I'm gonna just leave it as a attribute. I like to leave things as attributes to start off with just because uh, I can see very easily in the geometry spreadsheet whether or not things are working or if I've messed something up. So let's do V at, and we'll call this point pause, and we'll set that equal to, and then we'll use the point function to grab the position of our point. So like I said, if we look at our actual add node, we have a point position, but we don't have any primitive attributes. So we're just gonna grab the position of our point, and that is a vector. So we're gonna set that first input to the, or our first, um, the first part of our point function here. What it requires a geometry input, we're gonna set that to one because it's going to be wired into the second input. From there, we need to specify our attribute that we wanna grab. So it's gonna be position and then what point we wanna grab it from, which is gonna be point zero. If I press control and enter it now, we can see with our attribute wrangle, if we go over to our primitives, we now have a vector for our point pause. So let's go ahead and create another vector here. So we'll call this, this is gonna be, or sorry, not another vector, but another attribute. We'll call this f at distance because the distance function is gonna generate a float value. So f at dist, and we'll set that equal to, and we'll type in the distance function. And the distance function here says it's going to return the distance between two points. And that's not necessarily two points, but two points in space, so two, different areas, not necessarily like just points. So we can calculate between two primitives if we want or a point and a prim as we're doing here. So the the distance function requires two inputs. That's going to be the first one is going to be the first vector. And the second one is going to be the second vector. So for the first vector, we're going to be using our, we'll just type in at P. So our current position of whatever primitive we're on. And then our second one is just going to be at point pause. And if I press control and enter now, you can see down in our geometry spreadsheet, we now have a bunch of values in our distance function here, or in our distance attribute. So if we just drop down, let's actually close this. If we drop down in our scene, a poly extrude, we can come to this distance and we'll just raise this up. Uh, we'll come to our local control We'll set this distance scale, it's set to Z scale right now. So if we set this to our dist, you can see that we have something going on here. We don't want it to be on this uh, connected components though. We want this to be individual elements. And now we have each face being extruded 
based on how far it is from our point. So if we take our add node and we select it and press enter in the viewport, I can move this around and I could keyframe this and it's going to adjust our extrusion distance based on wherever this is at in space. And we can do things like fit this. So we could do fit, and this is gonna be, if we just look at some of these values, the, let's actually undo that first. If we just click on this, we can see it's going from basically between one and eight, but we'll just do zero. So we'll do fit, we could fit this between zero and we'll just do 10. And then it's going to just clamp everything um, between that. So, or that goes over that. And we'll set that to maybe like zero and three as our extrusion distance. So now you can see that we have lost a little bit of our extrusion distance, but we can take this and move this around, or maybe we wanted to invert that. We can come back in here and set this. Let's actually change this to like five, between five and zero. And now we have inverted our, we've inverted our extrusion. So it's gonna start off not extruded. And as this starts to approach, it's going to extrude before it reaches its maximum and goes back down to zero. So some interesting things that you can do with that. I have a video where I actually use this for a full procedural animation. I will leave a link to that or a card, put it up on screen now. So you can watch that and get some ideas. That's also available on Patreon. If you wanna grab that project file, you can do so on there. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the VOPS version of this. So we'll drop down a prim VOP. And we're gonna do basically the same thing here. We're gonna wire in our grid into the first input and our, note, or our point into our second input. And let's jump in here. We don't really need that for the moment. Let's drop down a get attribute. And we're going to change this from file just to the second input. You can also leave that on file and put op input two into the file. Let's just leave it as is though. And we're going to leave it on point and we're going to do our attribute is set to P. And we'll take a distance node and drop that down. We can wire in our position into P1 and our out from our attribute into P2. And then we can find export this. We'll just set this to dist again and wire this in. And you can see that we now have this distance attribute with some values in there. And if we jump back up to outside of the primitive up, we can just copy this poly extrude and take a look here and we're getting the same thing. And again, we can come into our add node and we can move this around and it's going to adjust accordingly. Now, if you want to do what the fit, like we did with the wrangle, we can just do a fit range in here, wire this in and we'll set this to zero to 10 to like five to zero, like we had before. And once again, we have inverted our extrusion. So as we approach, it's going to extrude and then it's going to go back to zero if we were to keyframe this. So just some interesting things that you can do with these to get some procedural animation. You can clamp that if you would like and just keep it so that it is between zero and one or whatever to, to drive values um, for all sorts of different things. So some interesting things you can do with the distance function in order to get some procedural things inside of Houdini without having to add a whole bunch of keyframes. You can drive it all just kind of based off of a, like a, a point moving through space if you want. And again, I'll leave a, a card to that procedural animation that I did that's also available on Patreon if you'd like to, to run through that. But anyways, hopefully this has helped you out, runs through a couple of things that we've covered now. Um, so using our, you know, our point function as well as this new distance function and the fit. So some kind of building, you can see how all these kind of start to play together and how you can start to use some of these things in order to actually build some, some setups. So some interesting things going on there. Anyways, hopefully this helped you out. Thank you all for watching and have a good day.